Sure. Um, because I'm not familiar with your setup and for the time for them to take me to train me so I can train you, they might as well just train you themselves. Um, right. <clears throat> so, okay, we got 267 <clears throat> fields of data. Let's click cancel. Remember, we don't want to make any changes here. Now click on variable links. I'm just taking a look at what is the setup here. Right. <clears throat> so, and so you'll notice that some of them are adding a prefix. That's the P? Yep. It looks like some of them are substituting a value when it's empty. Yeah. At least the one we're looking at is. Right. Um, and that keeps going through the list of P is the only thing I see that's been any um, modified. There's an S oh, here. No, there's an S. Click on, click on thickness and we'll see what the suffix is they're adding. Double click on this? Just click once on it. Oh, okay. And when you click on the link in the list, you see its settings on the right. Right. So you don't have to double click. If you just click once, you've selected that variable link so you can see its settings on the right. Okay. And it's adding the suffix of the double quote. It's interesting they're substituting a, is that a six in that field, if I can see that correctly? No, it's a, uh, it looks like an O with uh, an accent. Oh, interesting. It's an odd character. Okay. Oh, yeah. See that? knows why they're doing that, but there might be a reason for it. Yeah. Okay, let's scroll back through the list on the left. I think it's just prefixes and suffixes that they're doing. Yep. Okay. So that's interesting. So lots and lots of different categories of data. Yeah. Okay. So that's your variable lengths. We'll click cancel. And then let's look at um, search criteria. I need to see if they're using any search criteria. Nope. Cancel. And now let's look at price styles to see if they're using any price styles. And no, they're not, Thankful. so cancel. So it's just they have variable links that point to the fields, and it's a lot of them. Right. And they expect the data to be in a comma separated format. Right, that's the, two, right. the two crucial things. Yep, so we'll click cancel and cancel since we're not making any changes. Okay, so now let's, in this table that you're showing right here, um, in the middle of the page. Yeah. Let's click on the first variable link that you see here. This one. And if you take a, an, on the catalog panel, there's some backward and forward buttons. If you click the backwards to go to the previous links, let's go all the way to the first one in the table. That one? Okay, so that is a laminate grade one variable link. Make sure you don't make any changes here. Yeah. Now let's go forward to the next one. And that's a no module variable link. Next one. So this is how you can walk through the tables to see how the content's been tagged. I see, right, okay. So just keep going forward and you can see what they're using for each one of these. So that's your, yeah, part number. What was the part number one? Go back one. Part number four. Uh, PN for price list. Make sure you do not open the menus because you might accidentally change something. Right, okay. So all you're doing is clicking forward at this point. Don't open any menus. Sure, okay. Uh, let's go forward to the next one. So you're just looking at the panel to see what's been assigned. Yeah. Etc. So you can use the panel to see what settings are on the variable links they already have in here. Yeah. So that might be helpful if you need to tag content, you need to know what variable link to assign it to. Right. So let's say they want you to tag the uh, data directly above the one you have currently selected. Yeah. So it's a depth link. So then depth. you can, yeah. um, what's it assigned to? The, the number it's assigned to, is that the one that's in the document? Yes, it is. The 36? It's assigned, see? If you look the the um, data that you have currently selected in the document, the search key is I can't really read because it's so tiny. T R E C M T G thirty six seventy two. This one here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you look at the document, that's the part number that's showing in the document. That's right. Yes. So that's the search key. So if, okay. 
Okay, so if you need to tag that 36 inch data above it, yeah. what you have selected now, you would want to assign it to that part number that you see in the first column. T-R-E-C-M-T-G-3660. That one, right. Whatever I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, um, so what you would have to do is highlight the... So we have a, that table tagger, but you need to know what these all are. So if you... Um, oh, tricky, tricky, tricky. Yeah, so why don't you find out, first of all, what is the work they expect you to do? Yes. Um, so if they need you to tag content, you would just simply look at what content's already tagged to know which variable links to assign. And then you would, now once you know which variable links to assign, then you can tag that content that's there. Okay. And um, you can do it with table tagger, but um, because there's so many variable links to choose from, if you want to be careful you're selecting the correct variable link, what yeah. I would do is you have that 36 inch depth content tech selected. Yeah. I would just simply um, select a part number on the top left that's not linked. Yeah, this one. Select that, double click, yeah. copy yeah. it to your clipboard, right. control C. Yeah. Now. Go back and select that depth link again that's down below it. Yeah. And now select the depth that's not linked above it. And you need to, yeah, select the whole thing. You got to include the double quote in there. Yeah. And now if you look at the panel, it remembered the depth variable link setting. So now you just have to paste the search key in the search key box. So it's assigned a, a the correct search so, key. Okay, so then I paste that. It's 3660 in there. And then you would click assign, and then that would make it a depth variable link. Oh, right. Exactly. Very cool. So, um, because they have so many variable links, this yeah. is one way you could do it so you could make sure you're assigning the correct variable link. Right. Um, but now another option would be just to study the table, you know, and take a note. So if you go for example, to that second row that's already tagged. Yeah. And it's like the very first link that's in it. This one. Okay. So you just you know make a note to yourself. Okay, that's P in for price list. What's the next one? Height. That's your height. Next one. Width. Width. Next one. Depth. Yeah. Depth. Next one. Thickness. Thickness. Next one. U.S. price. List price for U.S. Next yeah. one. New form wood grain pattern, next okay. one. Okay. New form tapered edge, next one. Oh, okay. So if you can like write that down yeah. or remember it, yeah. then you could just use table tagger to tag the ones that aren't tagged. I see. Do you remember how to use table tagger? Yeah, I, I remember it. I, I, I'll have to try it. So now I can also so, look at the column headings too okay. and get a clue from that. Okay, if I was using table tagger on this, because you're not tagging the entire table, yeah. you can triple click to select just that very first line of content that's not tagged. Uh, so you might have to drag select. Yeah, I guess so. Right? Okay, and now you can put the panel in table tagger mode. Uh, oh. That's by clicking that T in the top left corner. Oh yeah, right. And in the first column is the search key column. Yeah. And you want to put a placeholder in the first column, so you leave that set to first column. Yeah. And now for the variable link, you have to open the variable link and choose the right one. Oh, the price that would be the price, right? Or the part number. Yeah, but which part number? Don't they have more than one part number in here? Yeah, right. Uh, you know, so to me, that's the complicated part. It's how to know which variable link to assign. Because there's so, so if many. you're using the table tagger, you're going to have to have made a list of these are the variable links that are used in this chart. So now I know which ones to assign using table tagger. Right. And it, it looks like... So when they... table tagger would allow you to tag it much more quickly and yeah. much more um, accurately because you're not typing the part number in yourself. Yeah. It's right. happening programmatically. But the downside is, how do you know which variable link to assign? 
Uh, right. And I think maybe the, re the reason there's so many variable lengths is because they combine different documents and probably combine the uh, tables. Is that possible? Like, you know, one had 50, the other one had 50, so now you got 100. And it could be consolidated. I, I didn't understand. Well, it sounded to me like they, uh, they were mentioning combining more than one document into this big 400 page one. So if they had done okay. them separately and with different variable links, then the variable links would add up, wouldn't they? Uh, um, if they're putting, yeah, so if they're taking several documents yeah. and merging them to create one large document, mm -hmm. I would assume all those documents are using the same DDF settings. Right, but I'm just thinking that there could be a problem with... Um, the variable links have slightly different names, but they do the same thing. And there could no, be... No, that would not... Because they're all using the same database definition settings. Oh. So yeah. how would that happen? Yeah, I don't know. Because he did mention possibly having to go back and recreate this properly. That he might... said you might need to re-tag tags that are already there. Well, he didn't know anything about variable data or anything of that. That nature was just a matter of like, it looks like it could have been messed up. And I'm not sure which document I'm even looking at, whether this is the one that's been consolidated or not. And without having Greg here to talk to, I, I'm just guessing, so. Okay. Uh, but I'll find so out more. So I would say after your training today, then the next step would be to, get, to find out exactly what it is he needs you to do on these documents. Right, and it's good that we're just taking a quick look at this now, and then I can go back to him with a little more information as to what questions to ask and what the history yeah, is. Yeah, does he want you to only add new tags to content that's not tagged? Correct, yeah. Two, two, is he gonna need you to replace anything that's already tagged? Correct, okay, I'll ask that. And also, like, so should and we then be, three, yeah. is he going to want you to update any of these? Right. Yeah, I'm going to ask all that. And even the fact yeah. that should we be working with this as one big document or should we be, like you're saying in the beginning there, like using two-page documents, you know, like 50 pages and eight of them. I don't know. I'll find that out. Yeah, what is his purpose of putting them all in a single document? Yeah, yeah, it might be just the wrong kind of strategy on this and it, I'll figure that out and then we, we might yeah. have, we might have to schedule another another session with you then right so you can just um, after today's session when you discuss with them okay what is this process of, what, are, what are the goals that you have for me to for these documents once you figure that out what the tasks are they want you to do on these documents yeah if you have any questions you can just send us an email and say Okay, here's what I, you know, I spoke to them and here's what they're going to want me to do and these are the questions I have. Mm -hmm. And we can move forward from there. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah, I don't know enough about it. Okay. And uh, I was just kind of left with the training. You know, we'll do the training and then we'll figure it out after that. So to jump in in the middle yeah. is just... Um, and hopefully with this training that will help you to know what kind of questions you might want to ask. Exactly, yeah. It's one place to start, right? <laughs> and that's... Yeah. That's I got, um, got to start somewhere. Okay, and we did, um, uh, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so now we'll go back to training a bit. Sure. Cool. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. Let's, let's, let's drop this for now, and, and there's too many questions I don't have answers for you for. Yeah, I don't know how to, yeah. So until you know exactly what you're going to be doing in these documents, we'll wait and see. Um, just wanted to make sure you understood how to apply the information we've taught you already to these documents. Yeah, no, that's really good. Like, like uh, now I can yeah, see it in a different. Cool there. So we discussed what is a DDF, what are its settings, which we just reviewed for this one, and we discussed how to tag individually using Table Tagger, which we just reviewed. Yeah. And then how to update, and um, for updating, we don't know yet if they want you to do that or not, so we won't take that any further until we know. But basically, there's two different ways to update. You can just update the document, or you can update with a report. Yeah, and I have questions like, why, why, would, why is this table only half tagged and the other half isn't? 
you know, is that something? Maybe because that's the project they want you to do. That might be the task they want from you is to tag content with not yet tagged. Yeah, and that's, that's, yeah, now that I know that about even like these blue lines, <laughs> I didn't know that. So now I can ask more questions. That's great. So now you know. I'm also noticing in this document, they do have picture links. So if you'll see there's some picture frames with a little blue picture icon on them. Yeah. So that's a picture variable link. So it's indicating oh. that that picture file, what picture should show in that frame. Right. Our software is deciding. So when you update the document, we'll bring in whatever picture file the data set should be there. Is that what that blue square with the X? Yes. I see. I was wondering about that. So that that is what we call a picture link, which was we were going to cover that today if your documents are using them. And uh, they are. So we will discuss what is a picture link and how does that work. Right. So that's that's a little picture in there. And that, that blue thing on top means it's, it's being... The it's the yeah. actual frame that's tagged. So if you take your InDesign selection tool and click on the frame itself, okay. right now you have the content yeah. selected. We want to click just on the picture frame. That there one? you go. Yeah. And it, oops. Do we have the picture frame selected? No, not yet. That, that one? Why not? I'm not sure. Yeah. So that's the image. And that's... So I got that, you can move that around. Yeah. And then this one moves with the, uh... oh, interesting. Well, I'm not understand why we can't seem to select the actual picture frame that has the picture link in it. Um, I'm gonna have to ungroup that. I don't know. I think you have the table selected. Can you just double click on that picture? Oh, Oops. right. Yeah, if I double click, I get these. There you go. No, it's still not selected because it doesn't show on the panel that that's a picture link. Oh, up here. So what I'm doing is that, up here. Okay, still not there. I'm looking at the panel to find have it give me information about that picture link, and that's not happening. Up so here. we have not yet selected the picture link in the document. Oh, so yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to select that picture link in the document. Yeah, because it says and it's not the actual picture we need to select; it's the actual picture, the frame that that picture's in that we need to select. Oh. Um, so we need to select that picture frame. And we still don't have it selected because, whoops. Yeah, I just hit it. Um, so that's, if I drag it out there. It looks like maybe there's two of them there? Or no? No. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, open the layers panel in InDesign oh, with that yeah. box selected. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, it's, it it's giving me there the... Okay, and now drop, oops, now drop down, oops, I can't see the document now. What happened? Okay, drop down where it says layer one, there's a clap, yeah, expand that, and scroll through the list to find what you have currently selected in layer one. Is it showing you? No, it's not. Oh, you don't have it selected anymore. Okay, yeah. select it again. Okay, That's got the so layer. I don't know what layer this is on anymore. Um, Strange. So, Drop down text frame. I don't know, I can't find it. Why uh -huh. can I select this frame? Huh. Sorry, what what did you want me to do? Um, I'm trying to select the frame that holds that picture. So yeah. the panel will give me information about that picture link. Right. Well, I cannot seem to select that frame in well, the it's, document. It's got a, it's so been I just grouped. Have to select the frame that has that picture in it. it. It's a group. So what about if I ungroup that? Yeah, you could try that. So ungroup, ungroup. And we want to make sure we don't save the document with any changes. Yeah, no, this is, uh, I've already saved this as my own. It's got my name, Martin, too, there. Because I was okay. uh, shuffling fonts around and stuff. Okay. But I don't know why, why is this not even ungrouping? So it says, yeah, it says it's this group here. Well, I have an idea now. Select that picture again with your, and then look at the variable links. Uh, I mean, not variable links, the InDesign links panel that shows you the links to the graphic files that are in the document. Maybe that'll help us find it. Yeah, there's, there's. So it's the, T W Q C three yeah. EPS. Now go back to the layers. All oh, right, yeah. 
And can we find that in the list? There it is. Right here. Um, select that, that one. Yeah. Okay. So I got... Um, yeah, the panel is still not showing it's linked. I don't understand that. So it's got tag picked so that it's giving me the option to tag it, but it should be already be tagged. Is that, is that right? Yeah, it should be tagged. It is tagged. I think that looks like it's tagged. Yeah, I can hide it and it hides the little blue square. Along with so it. if it's got a blue, if that, oh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll drop this and we'll resolve that later. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll go back to your training now. Yeah. And you'll learn about picture links, so maybe that will help. Yeah, that'll, that'll help me for sure. Well, it's probably to do the grouping or something like it's all these a layer, like it looks really overly complicated. It needs to be yeah. Well, up. here's another thing we do. Copy that picture to your clipboard real quick. Yeah. And now make a new document. It doesn't matter. It's just one page and it doesn't matter what size it is. Paste it. Yeah, there we and go. And now go up to the design merge menu. Yeah. And choose merge. Yeah. And one of the things you can do is run a placeholder list report. So where it says the action is a variable content, instead do a variable link report. And it's going to give you a report about the links in the document. Oh. Click start. That's nice. And then click, um, oh, look, there are no variable links in uh, the document. That's so it may be showing that picture link icon, but it's not really, it's not linked anymore. I see, right. And that's the mystery. So why is it showing that as, why is it behaving? Why is it display as though it's a picture link, but it's no longer a picture link? Yeah. I it, have no idea. So it takes some troubleshooting there and uh, it's indication of just a corrupt file maybe or something, right? Um, I'll put the question down here. Why picture link icon, but not really linked. Right, right. Okay. And um, it may be no big deal because they may not want you to do anything with them anyway, so you can just ignore it. Right, yeah, no sense going down but, the rabbit hole, right? If we don't yeah, there's to. no sense going into a million, you know, gyrations trying to solve something if it's not something you go, that's going to create a problem that you don't need to solve it anyway. Good. But um, if you are going to need to do any kind of linking with the pictures and work on the pictures, then it, then it will need to be resolved. Yeah, got it. But if you're not going to be doing anything with the pictures anyway, then we can just ignore it. Yeah. But sure. if they do expect when you get done and you return a document to them, are they going to... Or, we need to find out what they want you to do because if if they're gonna want you to do linking and then return the document to them for them to do the updating, yeah. Well, then we're gonna need to resolve this. Right, right. Or am I the or, only? Am I the only if one? If they're gonna give you the document, have you do tagging and then you do updating? Do mm. they expect the pictures to update? If right. they do not, then we don't need to worry about it. But if they do, then we need to resolve it. So there's yes, two yeah. cases where we might need to resolve it. One, if they're going to expect you to do any updating of the pictures, and two, if they're going to expect you to send the document so they can update the pictures, these pictures will not be updated by our software because they're not a real link. Right, and it is, we need approval on this anyway as is. Like if I create a PDF and say, how does this look, guys? Is this all good? You know, is it what they expect to see? I don't know that yet either. So fine. Yeah, and creating a PDF of the documents, well, isn't um, have anything to do with our software. Our software totally has to do with changing what kind it's in the document. Right. I'm just saying it might be not right right now anyway, or yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's, I don't even know. Yeah, so we'll wait. Okay, so it's a mystery. You may or may not need to link and update pictures. So since we don't know, I will go ahead and train you on that. Yeah. So this was helpful for me to know that yeah, I should train you on pictures. Okay, let's close this document and go back to your training document. Sure. Takes a while to even close it. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> want to work with large documents myself. Yeah, I've had it this. too bulky. I, I had a little bit of trouble even just packaging this up, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, um, here's yours. Miles new. It's the one you were working on, the one on the right. Cancel. 
The one on the right, Miles Lou. Oh, that one. Yeah, that was yours. Yeah. Okay. That was one you were working on. Do you want and to you can ignore this. Okay. It's because this is an old Adam Price document, and we changed oh, the software to the right. Design Rich Catalog. Yeah. So when you see that warning, just ignore it. Okay. And actually, with our Design Rich Catalog software, we made a change. So when you use Design Rich Catalog in a new document, we never registered Design Rich Catalog as a required plugin. So if somebody opened it and it didn't have catalog, they would never see this warning in the first place. Oh, see. Uh, okay. But with our old Auto Price software, we did put information in the document that said, oh, auto price is a required plugin. So if anybody opened the document and they don't have auto price, such as you right now, you'll see that warning. Right. But um, we changed our software, so we no longer put that information in the document, so people never see that warning anyway. Yeah. But because this document was made with our old auto price software, that, and that old software did do that, that's the reason you're seeing this warning. So don't worry about it. You'll never see it moving forward when you're working with Design Rich Catalog documents. Right, so just an old document. It's just annoying. We need to update our demo file, our training file, so we just haven't done that yet. Okay. Okay, so for your last training session, we showed you how, um, what the database definition looks like for this document, and then we did some tagging. We did individual tagging as well as table tagging. We also looked at your variable link settings so you could see how you could, for example, change the underscore color. So just in a glance, I know which ones are a list price and which ones have been tagged as a sale price by the color of the underscore. Yeah, right, the blue and green, okay. Yeah, and then we saw how to do your updating. Yeah. And we did updating um, individual placeholders or a selection of placeholders, and then we did an update document, and we did an update document with a report. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't have any questions about that information that we covered, we're ready to get started on the next. And that would be picture links. And since the documents did show a picture icon, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. So, let's take a look at the data that we're in. Um, one quick way to do that is if you just put a new text frame on the page board of your document. Yeah. And put it somewhere on the page board. On here? Yeah, that's yeah. why these are pretty large. No, that's not the page board, that's the document page. We need to oh. go on the page board. There you go. Yeah. Now put your text cursor in there. To remove any text you already got in that frame. Okay. Oops. And now command place to place a file in that frame. Command, so I'll place a, it's a command D, that one? Yeah. And now choose our data file, which you go back to our um, training folder. Uh, okay, let me just find that. Um, it's, um, it's right here under Design Rich Catalog, under Downloads, Design Rich Catalog, Out of Price Tutorials. Oh, in here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, under Downloads. Tutorial right. files, etc. So, Command D, Downloads. Uh -huh. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know what the Design Rich Catalog course is on your desktop. Did so, you have a second copy of your desktop? Oh, open right. That. Let's open that. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, open yeah. that first one now. Autopress tutorials, and now tutorial files, and now catalog page, and now miles.txt. That's the one I want you to select. That one. And okay. click open. Okay. Oh. Okay. And now scroll around to your pasteboard. Well, you're going to need to make that frame larger. Uh, this might have been a slower way to look at it after all. Let's make it wider. Okay. Let's highlight all the text and make it smaller. Command A and change the font size to make it tinier. Oops. Okay, so you want to go with smaller font? Yeah, yeah, so it can fit in here. Okay. And now let's make that frame wider so we can see a whole row at once. It doesn't wrap. Oh, there we go. Okay. So take a look at that first row. All right? Yeah. Um, I guess so now if you want to do tab settings so you can read it more easily, you can just select all that text and set your tab settings so it lines up better. Um. Was it Command Shift T? Control Shift T. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, put a tab right after the R and item number. So one of these here? Yep. Yeah, right there it works. And then I just click in the bar. Click right above it. Right in here? Or here? Yeah, click. Oh, there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Don't okay. move it. Put it back where it was. Put it shortly after the R. Okay, now put oh. one after the word list price. Click yeah. right here. Yeah. A little more. And over. then one after sale price. Yep, and then one after UK list price. Right. Okay. One after UK sale price. One after um, quantity. The word quantity is pretty big. And that should do. Okay, now okay. let go. Close that. Okay. Okay, now let's look at the text. Okay, so you, each row had the following information in your data file. The row you had item number, list price, sale price, UK list price, UK sale price, a quantity, and notice you have a picture field. Uh, huh. The picture field contains the file name of the graphic that you want us to place in the document for you. Okay. And um, in your data file, there will either be just a file name like this, or it could be the full path. Right. Right. So it can uh, be a path. I don't know if the data file, if they're going to, if they want you to do any updating, then that, and they want you to update pictures, then the data file they give you is going to need to have the picture field is going to need to have either just the file name or the full path to the file that you want us to place in the document for you when we update the document. So either one is good. Either one, either. Okay just the file name or the full path. Okay, because that, that was one question that we had. Is it possible to have the link stored on my hard drive here and then have the InDesign file on a cloud-based, um, server-based, you know, accessible by multiple people and have it linked to my... Oh, or does that's that, a mess. I'm just wondering okay. because there, there's so much, you know, there could be like a... a bigger amount of data than we have room for in the cloud or you know it means the difference between upgrading plans and all that so that was one question uh, that uh, Greg had well that's kind of interesting yeah I wonder I, so I, I'm going to suggest that that question be submitted by email so we can forward it to the people that would the engineers so they can help us understand yeah, what, yeah. how does this work if it's a cloud-based document ah uh, um, right right i haven't worked with a cloud a document that's stored in a cloud environment i see yeah and also so in, in as design. far as i know like if yeah. i have an InDesign document and it's on a file server yeah which basically that's a cloud correct that's right. It's not yeah. on my local system, it's on some other system. Yeah, it's a path. If I have a yeah. document that's in on some other system, if I open the document, nobody else can open it. Oh, yeah, because InDesign is different than Illustrator. They all work differently. So only one user can have the document open at a time. I um, see. If anyone, ha else, if anyone has that document open, no one else can open it. Right. So I don't know what this means when you yeah. say it's on a cloud where more than one people can have it open at the same yeah. time. I'm not familiar with that. Right. And, so if and, that's a question that you have about can these documents be stored in a cloud-based storage system where more than one people can have it open at a single time, that's going to be a question I have to send to the engineers. Good Because I'm not familiar with it. Okay. I'll, I'll uh, definitely find that out or ask. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that mean on a cloud base where more than one person can open it? If that's something we need to know, we'll have to forward that to our engineers. Yes. Because I'm not familiar with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm familiar with the document either being on your system or your document being in some other system that you can connect to, and you are the only one that has it open at any one time. Right, right. And yeah. when you close it, then someone else can open it. Right. But when you have it open, no one else can open it because you're the one that's working on it, so no one else can. Oh, they get an error then. Yeah. Okay. So now, okay. regarding where the graphic files are. Mm. Seriously, that's just an InDesign thing. So mm. InDesign can connect to the space where those graphic files are, then the files are not missing. Right. If InDesign cannot connect to the system where the linked files are, then InDesign will say those files are missing. Mm -hmm. Now, 
When we go to do an update, so we're going to tell InDesign, oh, I want you to switch which picture file is in this picture frame. Yeah. When we update a picture link, what we're basically doing is we're telling InDesign, oh, I want you to switch which pictures in this picture frame. I want you to place a different picture in this picture frame. Right. When we do that, we need to tell InDesign where to go look for them. Okay. And the way that we do that is through your InDesign catalog preferences. In your catalog preferences, you tell catalog where to search for the picture files that you're telling InDesign to place in the document when you do an update. Okay. So let's do some linking and then I'll show you how to set those paths. So go to this category five octopus cables picture in the document. Yeah. And select it with your content tool. This one here? So that's your Ethernet PC cards picture. You can work with that one instead. Okay. So select it with the picture content tool. So uh, the content selection tool is the white arrow in your InDesign tools bar. This and one. now click on that picture in that picture frame. Oh, okay. Perfect. And press delete so that picture frame has no content in it. Okay. Now select that picture frame with your InDesign selection tool. Perfect. On your Design Merge Catalog panel, we want to link that InDesign picture frame, and it is already linked as an example for you. It's linked to the K11002 variable link is picture. Yeah. No rule, no search criteria, no price out, no notes, etc. Click replace so you can do it again. Now, you're not seeing a little icon because it's under the star. So it's just not showing. The star is hiding. Oh, right. Okay. Should okay. I hide, hide the star? So or? you click on that star and press delete. Okay. This one too. And click back on that picture frame. Yep. Why aren't we seeing the icon? Oh, let's make sure you're showing your frame edges. So go up to the um, InDesign view and yep. show extras. Uh, extras, show frame edges. Show frame edges. You have to show frame edges. I see, it. right, right. Okay. So that see. little blue picture box icon is indicating that picture oh, frame right. is a catalog picture link. That's so on so text nice. links, you see the underscore. On picture links, you see that little icon on the frame. Where, where's the underscore? Where? On your price links, there's an underscore. Oh, right here, this blue one. So that's the equivalent. Oh, oh okay, I get it. So that's a so flag. If it's a text catalog link, yeah. if it's text, you'll see that little underscore. Right. If it's a picture catalog link, you'll see that little icon. I see, right. And then and there it is. So the icon's indicating that's a catalog picture link. Right, there's a little when mini. You see the underscore, yeah. that's indicating that's a catalog text link. Got it, got it. And there's a little but mini one But to see the search. picture icon, you have to show your frame edges. Yes. So, so if you I... open a document and you thought it had picture links and you don't see the icon, it's probably because you're not showing frame edges. Right. So if I turn that on and off, yeah. So that's all the edges. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Let's put that star back in the document. So undo. Yeah. Okay, so the star was covering that picture thing up so you couldn't see it. Um, right, okay. Let's, yeah, so now let's go, let's look at the category five octopus cables um, picture. It's down below. Yep. There you go. Okay. Let's remove that picture so you can see that it's going to actually be changed. So take your selection tool, content selection tool. Yeah, the, that was that white arrow. Select yeah, just the picture one. of the cables. Yeah. Delete it. Delete that. Okay, now we need to assign that picture frame to the correct search key. Now, do I select? So the search key we want to use is J sixteen O eight four. Select that picture frame. What's this in token? Cybridge catalog. Type in J sixteen dash zero eight four for the search key. So J16-084. And we want it to be a picture variable link. So that's the correct setting already in the panel just by chance. Yeah. The rule is everything else is blank or nothing. So now click tag pick. 
Oh, okay. So now it's going to look for that. Yeah, and now it'll go find the picture that that search keyword says should be in that frame, and we'll bring it into the frame for you when you do an update. Oh, okay. So I don't have to go looking for it manually as long as it's got the right search key. Um, okay, so look at that data you put on the pasteboard again. Yeah. And go oh, find the J1608 format. Right, right here. Well, why is there two? And what is the file that it says it should bring in when you do an update? Yeah, octopuscables.tiff. And so it went and it found that picture and I put it in the frame for you. I see. Let me see. Where's... So the picture link yeah. is pointing to the picture field. Right. And the search key is pointing to the row. So when you do an update, we go find that row in the data file. And then because that variable link in the document is pointing to the picture field, we go to that row's picture field. We find out what file that picture field is saying to place in the picture frame, and then we place that picture in the picture frame. Oh, okay. So now if I click on that and then I go to links, it'll show me that octopus cable. If, okay. That's correct. It shows you which one. In design, it's showing you what file is in that picture frame. I see. Okay. That's an InDesign feature. Right. Not a catalog Right, feature. it's like a double check, right? What catalog did is it placed that picture in the frame for you. Now, if you want to see what, does in, what file does InDesign say is in that picture frame, you can go to your InDesign links to see that. So why do I not see the, the name in here, in, the, in Design Merge Catalog menu? I see the, the search. The Design Merge Catalog panel is telling you what search key is assigned to that picture link. Yeah. And yeah. it's telling you what variable link is assigned to that picture link. I see. And then I have to look at the, the table. The catalog is giving you the variable link settings. Okay. So now you know catalog went to the J1608 forward row and pulled the file that's listed in that row's picture field. Right. If you want to know what is the data in that picture field, you're going to have to go open the data file and look at it. I see, right. It's okay. not our job to tell you what data is in that field. It's our job to go get whatever that data says and put it in the frame for you. Right, just like the prices uh, you, you look in the, in the data file. Exactly. So I when you see. highlight one of those price links in the documents, so let's take your type tool and highlight one of those price links you have in the document. Like one of these. Yep. Look at the panel. Uh, oh, put it in single tag mode because it's in table tagger mode. Uh, so I'll click that double T. Yep. yep, there you go. So we tell you what settings are that price, but we don't show you what price is in the data file. All right. Okay. And then you have to look here. You if you want to know what price is in the data file, you have to go to the data file, find the row for that T, list whatever price. that is, T, whatever, and then go look at the list price. I see. see. Right. So the picture. So our panel doesn't show you what is the data in the data file. Right, that makes sense. Our panel shows you what settings are on the variable link you put in the document. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay. Okay. And yeah, it's not a data file viewer. It's a linking viewer. Right. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So um, when you have a picture link like the category five octopus cables, yeah. um, clicking on it in the catalog, um, it's assigned to the J1608 for search key, yeah. and it's pointing to the picture field, and the picture field says what file name, the file name or the file you want us to place in the frame for you. Right. But as you said, how do we know where that file is located? Yeah. And we do that through your catalog preferences. Would you like to see how you tell us where to go search for a file? Yeah. Okay. So you need to go to your design merge preferences. So go to the design merge menu and choose preferences. Oh yeah, right over here. So we have a lot of preferences. And the type of preferences we're talking about now is your search preferences. Where should we search for files? Oh. 
Okay. Okay, and so now we have two default paths. Mm -hmm. By default, we will look in the document folder, and by default, we will look in the database file folder. Oh, okay. There's two folders. And we have an option called search subfolders. Do you see that? Yeah, so right. So not only will we look in the document folder, but we'll also look in any subfolders that are in the document folder. I see. Right. And then and that... not only will we look in the database file folder, but we will also look in any subfolders that are in the data file folder. That search subfolder option applies to everything. Uh, yeah, right, right. So we're going to look in the document folder first. Then we will look in subfolders in the document folder. Next, we'll look in the data file folder. And if we can't find it there, we will look in subfolders in the data file folder. And now you can add additional paths if we need to search anywhere else. Oh, right. So there's my question about the, uh, the cloud-based uh, paths, if that would work in here or not. <clears throat> if your system is connected to that file server, then when you click add, yeah. you can choose that folder path and put it in here. Right, that should work. Yeah, I don't see why not. <clears throat> but it means your system has to be connected to that file server. Yeah. And in order to add the path, mm -hmm. and it means anytime you want to update, you need to make sure your system's connected to that file server first before you do the update. Right, okay. Because if your system's not connected to that server, when we go to do the update, we can't connect to it. Right. So the system's not connected to it. So you know how... So to add the path, you have to be connected to it. Yeah. Once the path is added, it's added. But now let's say tomorrow you come in and you turn on your computer, you need to connect to that server before you do any updating. Yeah. So if, if that is missing, what will happen? Because like normally in, in design, you get a low res and it'll be missing, but you can still work with the document. Got it. So uncheck your document um, option here because our files are in the document folder. Uncheck that one. And click, yeah, and click OK. And now click OK on the preferences. Now uh, you've got that picture link selected in the document. In the panel, you can see you have it selected, right? Yeah, yeah. Click the update button to see what will happen. Why is it not missing? Update. Huh. Let me look at your preferences again. So, huh. so image, preferences, search, search. I check data file also. Click OK, OK. Now let's try update. Ah, right. So we tell you, we, when you do the update, if we cannot find the file that the data file says should go in that picture link, you get this warning. Oh. Unable to locate the variable file named, and we tell you what the name is. Oh, there is a name. We tell show you the data that's in the data file. If it's a full path, you would see the full path. Yeah. We yeah. can't find the file that that data yeah. for that picture link. And so please confirm the files available either in your document folder or in one of your search paths. In other words, make sure your paths are correct. Right. And that the file is available in that path. And if you click, okay, and then you have choices. Yeah. If you click continue, let's do that. We put uh, a warning in here that tells you we couldn't find the file and we show you what the data was in the data file. Mm -hmm. So in our data file, it was just a file name. So you see just the file name. But if your data was a full path, you would see the full path here. I see. Right, right. Okay. Cool. And we size that message so it fits in the picture window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now let's try update again and click, um, oh wait, um, let's do abort Abort. and then we need to do an undo, I forgot, so add an undo yeah. Got to it. undo the update document. It's no abort, go to your edit menu in InDesign and choose undo and now choose undo again, edit undo. And then edit undo. Undo import? Yep. Okay. And now edit undo again. Do we need to do that? Okay. Do we need to do it? Okay. We got a picture in there now, right? That yeah. works. Okay. Yeah. So now choose that category 
picture again, and now do update. I need to get it back to the state it was in before we did this. Oh, I see. Now click abort to see what happens when you click abort. And we don't change anything. We aborted it. Okay, right. Now I'll click update again. If you click choose file, now you can say where is the file. Right, right. You can pick a new one. Click cancel. Let's see what happens when you click cancel. Okay. Choose file. Click cancel. And it takes you back to the dialog. Right, okay. Now, what no prompt is, is that means whenever you do an update, we won't prompt you to find the file. Right, okay. But we would just automatically put a... So click no prompt to see what happens. No and now click update again. Oh. And if you click no prompt, it's the same thing as clicking continue when you're doing it on a single placeholder. Yeah. If you're doing it on the whole document, so now do design merge, um, merge, and then choose action, choose update document for the action. Uh... Update. So on the calendar oh, here. panel, first um, you say which pages, and then you say what action. Right. Oh. And then you click start. Right. Um, and see, now click no prompt to see what happens. And we just update uh, them both without asking you. I see, right. Because you chose no prompt, we don't keep interrupting to ask you where's the file. We just automatically error message them. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So no prompt means if you're doing a whole document and you click no prompt, yeah. we'll only prompt you for the first one. And then when you click no prompt, we don't prompt you for any more missing files. We just automatically put an error message in. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Got it. So those are your options. Continue, no prompt, abort, and choose file. Yeah. Got it. <coughs> so undo this. Actually, no, just go to the design range menu. Yeah. And choose preferences. <clears throat> Click search. And turn document and data file back on. Click OK. Now I'll go back to design merge. Oh, click OK. Yeah. <clears throat> design merge, merge. All pages, update document, click start. Oh, yeah, back to having them in. Cool. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so now when you have a picture link in the document, you can put certain settings on the picture link so we know what you want us to do when we update those picture links. Right. To see your picture variable link settings, we need to go to the variable link style. <clears throat> So to go to the variable links dialog, you go to the design merge menu and you choose set up variable links. Oh, okay. Okay, now you have a picture link. If you click on the variable link on the left that says picture, oh, there, that's yeah, the variable yeah. link you're assigning, right? The picture variable link. Right. And when you choose that variable link on the left, you see what settings you can put on a picture link on the right. So first of all, it's type is set to picture. Yeah, here. That's what tells us that, oh, the data is the name of a file that you want us to place in the document. Mm. So we know that this is a picture that you want us to place in the document. And then look, when you tell us that it's a picture link, look, at, you have a fitting option. You see the words fitting? Yeah. So and thinking, if you open that menu, you see all our different choices. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Now, these are settings we apply on top of whatever InDesign does by default. There's Yeah, there's more choices. So, yeah. So here's what happens. It's not additional. It's on top of. So here's oh. what happens when you update a picture link. Oh. You have a picture link in the document. That yeah. picture link is telling us which row and field so that we know what file name or path to the file you want us to place in the document. Yeah. So now we know which file you want us to place in that picture frame for that item. Right. So now what we do is we tell InDesign, hey, InDesign, go get this file and place it in the frame. 
So InDesign does its default place options. And then on top of those InDesign place options, we apply whatever fitting you chose here. On top of it, wow, amazing. So it's just as though when you update a picture link, it's just as though you went to the picture frame, you said InDesign place this file in the frame, you told InDesign which file to place in the frame, InDesign place that file in the frame, and then we put it at top left center or side to fit after that. Right, okay. So InDesign place defaults are applied first, and then our picture link settings are applied on top of that when you update the picture in the document. Wow, okay. Yeah, let's... Do you see the setting called keep frame settings? Yeah. What that means is we don't do anything on top of what InDesign does. Oh. Okay. So keep frame settings basically means we use the InDesign default and we don't do anything above that or beyond that. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a default. Okay. Yeah. It's just the InDesign default settings and nothing else. Where if you chose size to fit, then it's InDesign default settings and then on top of that we size to fit. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say you want to do size to fit but you want the picture to be aligned to the left edge of the frame. How do you do that? Well, you choose size to fit, but now notice below you have some alignment settings. Do you see those? Right here, yeah. Yeah, so you could say for the horizontal and vertical, you could say for the horizontal, I want it to go on the left side of the frame. Yeah. So right now, horizontal alignment set to default, open that up and choose left. And now click OK. And now click that octopus cable picture in the document. Uh, right here, yeah. Uh, and on the catalog panel, click Update. Oh. And see, it's size to fit, but we aligned it to the left. Right, right. OK. So that's what the horizontal and vertical alignment settings do, is it does a horizontal and vertical alignment after it was size to fit, for example. Oh, you chose. so it's a second step. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Or actually a third step. And design default settings that are fitting settings and now also alignment settings. Oh, that's so a third. Like I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the variable link dialog box. Design merge setup variable links. Uh, okay. Choose the picture variable link in the list on the left. That's what we were discussing. Okay, so now we've discussed, okay, it's a picture type, and you can choose the fitting and the alignment. Let's put alignment for horizontal back to the default, which is centered, okay? Yeah. Now, we also have data options. Normally, with a picture variable link, it would be rare that you would want to add a prefix or suffix to the data that's coming from the data file. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But that is available should you need to. Here's a quick example. We have some people, and when they do an update, they want to show the black and white picture. Right. Well, that's not a good example. They want to show a low res, like for example, a dot PNG. Mm -hmm. But then when they're ready for print, they want to show the um, high res dot TIF. Oh. Or APS. Yeah. So what they would do is the they would um, they would have both versions of the file in the same folder. So there would be a file named catalog octopus cables um, octopus cables dot png, and there would be another file in the same folder named um, octopus cables dot eps. Yeah. And in the data file. It doesn't have a file name extension. It just says the file name Octopus Cables. Right. And so then I could set up my variable link to add the suffix dot png. Yeah. And so now when I update it, it'll automatically find all the png images. But mm. then when I'm ready to do my printing, I can change the suffix to my variable link to be dot eps. And now when I do my update, I bring in my high res. That's cool. Wow. Cycle so PI. that is assuming the data in the data file does not have the file name extensions on it. Right. So that's... instead, the variable link is going to provide those. That would have to be in the setup. Okay, I got it. Yeah. 
So that's one way that that can be accomplished. Neat. Um, so that's just a quick example of what might somebody want to use a prefix or suffix on a picture link, but you're not going to. So just always leave those blank. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, I have another example for the prefix. Let's say the data file has the full file name, octopuscables.eps. Yeah. Um, but um, in my search path, um, are set so we can go look in the appropriate folders for these. But when I do my update, I want it to go look at my low res folder. Right. And then when I'm ready to print, I want it to go look at my high res folder. Yeah. So I could add the prefix of the full path. So it'd be um, Martin's computer slash images slash low res slash. Yeah. That would be the prefix that I'm adding to the octopus cables dot EPS data. Uh -huh. And then when I'm ready to bring in the high res, I would come in and I would change my prefix to Martin slash images slash high res. So now when it does the update, it pulls it from the high res folder. I see. Right. Cool. So you can you can control, you know, what is the full path or what is the actual file name extension by using your add prefix, add suffix features on your variable link. Nice. Yeah. Now, holy cow, a simpler way to do this is just to put the correct file name in the data file and then use your search paths. Mm -hmm. So when I'm using my low res images, I have my search path set to look in the low res folder. But when I'm doing my high res, I have my search path set to look in the high res folder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's lots of different ways that you can tell us where to go look for the file. Right. Depending on what the data is. Which way you should do just depends on your job and your preferences and what you want to do. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so that's what the prefix suffix feature is and how people might use it for a picture link. Right. Um, but I don't think you'll be using it. So, no. yours will probably always be blank no prefix, no suffix. Yeah. Now, what to do for an empty link? If you're doing updating and your data file, um, they can, we can find the row for that record, but when we go to the picture field in that record, there's no, no data in it. It's an empty field. Yeah. What do you want us to do? We can put an error in the picture frame. So there would be a, an error shown inside the picture frame. It would be a picture of our error that says empty field. Right. Or if you open that up, where it says error, you can do ignore, which means we won't change it. Yeah. So if you just do an update document, you won't know that it did not update. But if you did it with a report, the image would not change in the document, but the report would say it didn't change because it was an empty field. Okay. You can do delete. I, you will probably never use that one. Remember, same thing with the text placeholder. If you choose delete, we delete it and it's gone from the document. The only way you can get that data back in the document is to actually edit the document. Right, and re-tag it. And re-link it. Yeah. So I doubt you'll ever use delete. Yeah. And then substitute. That's where you can say, oh, you know what? Whenever this there is no file for this picture link, I want you to substitute um, generic graphic.eps. <laughs> yeah, okay, I got it. And we'll put your default picture in the picture frame. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I would think you probably always want to set to error. You want to know, oops, this picture, we couldn't find it. What do you want, you know? Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, missing asset is a new feature we've added. So that's below empty link. This is where you can say by default, what do you want us to do if we can't find the file? Oh, okay. So it, the field had data in it, but when we went to go find that file, we could not find it. Right. You can set up a default action here. When it's set to error, you'll see those that message we showed you already where it says, we can't find the file, what do you want us to do? Mm -hmm. if, if you could instead just set it here, ignore, and then we won't do any, we'll just leave the picture alone and stop updating it. We yeah. won't show you a, message. Right, okay. If you choose delete, we'll just automatically delete it, which so you'll never want to choose that. 
Or you can choose substitute. So you can say, well, if we can't find the file that the data says to use, use this one. Right. Some generic graphic. Right. So uh, yeah. I'm assuming you're probably going to always want those set to errors. So you, when you're doing an update, you see alerts warning you, hey. <laughs> missing. Missing from the right. folder, right? That's missing from your links folder, for example. Yeah. Okay. You'll see a warning that the file is missing. So while you're updating the document, the minute we can't find that file, we interrupt the we interrupt, we pause the update to tell you we can't find the file. What do you want us to do before we continue updating? Right. So the difference between empty link and missing asset is they're kind if of... it's empty, that means the field in the database is oh, empty. Oh, it doesn't my... tell the file. Right. And this one is it's got the field or path there, or it's got the name of the image or the path, but it's can't but find it. But we can't find it. I see. Okay. Got it. Good. That's a good question. Yeah. Because it doesn't really, it kind of sounds the same if, you know, superficially, right? Empty link. There's two different types of errors. Yeah. But a link and an asset, you know, really... You know, a lot of people would think that's the same thing, right? <clears throat> oh, interesting. So an empty link means that the variable link in the document will become empty if we update it because there was no data in the field. Correct. Yeah, so I it's see. an empty link. Yeah, yeah. Missing asset means it's not empty, but we can't find it. Right, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like if you had a little info button there, you know, with a little paragraph explaining what it means but I got you here yeah. I got you here telling me which is uh, even better well as you use the software it will become second nature you'll go oh it's empty yeah the data in the yeah file. right oh it's missing yeah and I can't find it yeah yeah so the keywords are empty or missing got it okay it's good so those are the settings you can put on a picture link one the type is picture Two, how to fit the picture in the frame, yeah, including alignment. And then three, for your data options, do you want us to add a prefix or suffix before we try to update it? And then what if there is no data? Empty link. And what if there's data but we can't find it? It's a missing asset. Got it. Okay. Those are your picture link options. Got it, okay. Okay, we'll click cancel, I guess. Let's, let me see what the settings are on that now, because I know we were playing with those. So let's go back. Design, merge, setup, variable links. Okay. Click picture, I know, because we were playing with it. Yeah. So size would fit, change horizontal, align it back to default. Yeah. And now click OK. So we put it back to the settings it had originally. Right. right, got it, okay. So. Now that I've shown you how to put a picture link in the document, let's do the rest of them. So go to the bottom left corner of the document for a light line, Scarlet RAD. We haven't linked to that one yet. Now, instead of typing the search key in the panel, I can use the panel's preview feature to automatically put the search key in the panel for me. The way to do that is to take your type tool yeah. and click in a text placeholder that's assigned to the search key you want to assign to that picture. So, for example, select copper price for that first one. Yeah. Look at the panel. It put the search uh -huh. key in the panel, right? Yeah. Because it's showing you what settings are on that text link. Right. Now, take your InDesign, uh, I think you need to use the content selection tool for this one because it's in a group. Right. Select just that picture frame. And notice in the panel, the search key is still there. I see. I picked it up from here. So you've automatically got the search key in the panel. Now, for your variable link, change that variable link from list price to picture and click tag pick. Oh, and then it adds that. Right. Now, do I have to update that or I guess it's already updated? Oh, no, don't update it. We'll update it later. Okay. So we got one more picture that user star adapters picture. So highlight, we need to tag that picture. It's not tagged yet. Oh. So first of all, you need to know which search key you want to assign to it. Right. Still got the uh, search key from the last one. So I have to go down here and pick uh -huh. up that one. That puts the search key in the panel. 
Right, and then go back to the... It's just a shortcut. How do I get that search can? Okay. Right, go back here and go tag pick. Well, you tagged it with the large um, variable length. You tagged it with the list price variable length. Look at the panel. Oh, right, right, picture. And now click replace. And now it's tagged to the picture. I see, okay. So what, I would have put a number in there or errored? It would have tried to find a file whose file name is 336.90. Ah, right. And it would not have been able to find a file whose file name was 336.90. So then it would have shown you an error, a, a prompt saying, hey, I can't find a file whose name is 336.90. What do you want me to do? Missing asset error. Would that, is that what yeah, it would be a missing asset. I see, right. Couple steps. That makes there. sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the variable link is your is your row. So that's how you place picture links in a document. Cool. You've already seen how you can update them by using the button on the panel. Yeah. You can also update them by using an update document or an update document report. Okay. When you do an update, will you almost always be having a report? Well, let's, do you want me to show you both or just one? Sure, both is fine, yeah. Okay, so if you want to update the document, you go to the Design Merge menu and you choose Merge. Yeah. All Pages, Action, Update Document. Yeah. Start. Oh. And now we updated everything. Wow, yeah, some of them jump. Is now, go to the Edit menu in InDesign and say to undo the update document. Oh. Okay. Right. They're just getting resized. You yeah. can tell they changed. Yeah. Um, now let's do it with a report. So we go to the design range menu and choose merge. We're going to do all pages, but for your action, choose variable content report. And now click start. Oh. And we're going to sort by the key, including all information. Yeah. And we're going to perform an update. Do you see that? Sorry. Okay, we're going to sort by the key. Yeah, key. Under that, what information do you want to include in the report? We're going to include all of it. All of that. For your options, we do want this report to do an update. Right, perform update, yeah. Right. So we're going with our default options. Perform update is the most important one to know. Okay. Do you want this report to update or not? We do. Right. And then click OK. And then it makes and your report. Save the report where you can easily find it, maybe in the uh, uh, page folder. Uh, put it in here. Uh -huh, you might want to give it a different name so it doesn't overwrite any that are already in there. Report. Okay. So update. Yeah, so I'm going to see now. Okay. And then you can go over and open it up. It was on your desktop. Uh, oh, that's where it was, wasn't it? Okay. I think we're working with those on your desktop. Yeah. Maybe easier to find. The one at twelve twenty um, report. This one here. TXT, just go ahead and open it up. Yeah. And here's your report, and it's showing you each placeholder that got updated, what content did it used to have, whoops, which placeholder it updated. What content it has after the update, what was the content before the update, the name of the variable link, will search by favorite price out that should be empty, the document file name, document page, did the content change when you did this update, and what's the tag status. Those are all your text placeholders, those price sale price. And then if you go to the bottom of the report, you'll see the pictures. Oh, there we go. There's the path. And they're gonna change because they're no they they were linked, they they changed which location they're in. Right. Oh, and there's empty field here. Hmm. Yeah, we discussed that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How to work with an empty field. Right. That last week. That's the price. Right. Got it. Cool. So when you do an update, yeah. um, if you just do update document, we just update it without a report. But if you want to do a, a, 
update that includes a report, then you do it the way we just did. Mm. And that will give you information both on the text and picture placeholders. Okay. All right. So we've covered how to tag pictures. Yeah. We've, we've covered um, what are your picture link settings that you can put on those variable picture links. Yeah. We've covered how do you tell us where to search for the pictures. We've covered how to update them with the panel, how to update them with an update document, and how to update them with a report. And we covered how to handle different errors, missing picture, etc. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. So now that we're done with that tutorial. Great. Okay. So I think now we have some additional features in our software. One of them is that we can easily switch out which data we're bringing into the document. So your list price can bring in your US list price, but then you can change it so your list price brings in your UK list price. Right. Um, I don't see that you're, you're going to be using that updating with market specific information. So you update the document for one market and then you turn around and update the document tomorrow for a different market. Mm, right. I don't see you doing that. So mm. we won't cover that today. No. Price styles, we can style prices so that they have a special format on them. Yeah. Um, so the dollar isn't superior, or so if it's a dot zero zero, we don't show the dot zero zero in the document. Okay. Things like that. Yeah. Do you right. know if they're using any price styles? No, we looked in the dot DD app and they're not using any price styles. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, the only one there would be for Quebec French, which they use a comma instead of a period. Um, that all has to do with the data. Yeah. Okay. Not us. I see. All right. So if your data has a comma in it, you're going to get a comma in the document. If the data has a dot in it, you're going to get a dot in the document. Oh, that's defined there. Okay. Good to yeah. know. Good to know. You're a thousand separator. Right. So if the thousand separator in the data file is a comma, you'll see that comma in the document. If mm -hmm. in the data file it's a dot, you'll see a dot when you do the update. So no, we don't modify what the thousand separator is. That's in the data file. Okay. I'm just hoping I don't have to deal with French. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's real simple to change that in um, Excel, for example. And I'm sure if they give yeah. you the data, yeah. they're going to have it look the way they want it to. Oh, they, they would. They would so do you probably that. Yeah. have to worry about it. It's just yeah. whatever's in the data file, that's what you're going to get in the document. Sure. And when we looked at the DDF, we did not see any price styles. So you're not using price styles. Okay. We also, when we looked at your documents DDF, we did not see any search criteria, so we don't need to learn how to do those. Okay. Um, locking placeholders. You're not going to be locking them. I just want to make sure you know not to. Okay. So um, I will cover that topic next. Okay. So it is possible to lock a placeholder so we do not update it. Sure. Okay. You, can up, you can lock all, um, for example, if you go to design merge, set up variable links, and you click on the list price placeholder on the left, and on the right, there's a little lock icon. Yeah. If you check it, you've oh. locked or frozen it, so we will never update it. Oh, right. Now click OK and look at the document. When you have a locked placeholder, mm. we've changed the underscore to red. That's locked, eh? Yeah, so now, for example, go to K11002's list price yeah. and take your type tool and edit that list price. So it's 4.55, for example. And now click Update on the panel to update it. Over here? And it, and it won't change because oh. it's locked. Oh, right. So if you lock a variable link, we won't update it. It won't, it'll, it'll lose that, uh, that connection. Okay. It just tells us don't update it. It's oh. locked. Don't, okay. It's like freezing it. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's unlock that variable link. To do that, go up to the design merge menu. Set up variable links, choose the list price link on the left, 
and uncheck lock primes, yep. Yeah? And now say okay. And now I'll click update for that. And you'll see now we can update it. And also notice the underscore is blue again. Ah, right. So okay. that's how you can, you can lock a variable link. And if you lock a variable link, what that means is we will not update that any placeholders that are using that variable link. Okay, and that that goes by the, sorry, it's the columns, right? It goes by column. What do you call it? I don't know what that means by it goes by column. Uh, I'm just like, the, so list price, what do you call them? These are rows and columns. Variable links. Right, variable links. So it, it would be just, it goes by this entire link. So any placeholder that's assigned to the list price variable link will not update. Right, and then I could do, I could freeze this one or lock it. So it would Which go, one do you want to lock? Yeah, it's like sale price, I could lock that, or I could lock list price individually. Any variable link. So go back to design merge, set up variable links. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. So any of these. You could lock your pictures. Right, okay. And I just go over here and lock it. And then that means any placeholder in the document that's assigned to the picture variable link will not update. Okay. Now, where would you use that? Say if I got like a, a corrupted data file that the, you don't want the pictures to change or is that um for example with your inscape job yeah they uh, give you the job you tag everything product part number descriptions specifications price yeah and then and you update you tag everything you update everything you send it out for them to proofread they proofread it they okay everything, but now right before they print, they want to do a price update. But right. They proofread, so they don't want anything else to change. They only want the price to change. Right. So what I would do is I would go into my database definition and I would lock all my variable links except price uh, and then do a quick price update before I did my print. I see, that's a bit of insurance. Because I've already proofread my product name, my product mm. description. I don't want those to change. They've been proofread, they're all okay. I just need to do a last minute price update before I print. I see, okay. Like locking a layer or something. Yes, mm -hmm. like locking a layer. Yeah. Hmm, okay. By the way, if you put the this content on a locked layer, we'll still update it. Oh, it overrides on it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Locking a layer locks it from you changing the layout. That doesn't change. That doesn't lock us from changing the content. Right. That's overarching. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So that's how you can lock all placeholders that are assigned to a specific variable link or more. Hmm. Okay and how to unlock them if you did lock them. <clears throat> you yeah. can also lock individual placeholders. Okay. I highly recommend you do not do that. So I'm going to show you how yeah. to do it so you can avoid it. So um, did you did you leave your picture link locked? I don't know. Let's go back to design merge, setup, variable links. Choose that picture link you were looking at. Yeah, it's not locked. Okay, click cancel. We're fine. <clears throat> You can also lock them individually. Yeah. So put your type cursor inside the list price for K11002, for example. Uh, where it says 46.55. Yeah, here? Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just click in the middle of it. Yeah. Or highlight the whole thing. Remember, you either highlight 46.55, the whole thing. Yeah. You have to be careful then that you get highlight the whole thing, right. or just click once inside the middle of it to make it simpler. Right, yeah, there you go. I see. On the panel, yeah. there's a lock checkbox. It's to the left oh. of the word update. Right. Okay. Yeah. See that lock checkbox? Wow. Okay. And now click replace. And now mm -hmm. look at the document. You don't have to deselect that C. Oh, you lock just that one placeholder. Right. You did not lock all list price placeholders. Okay. You lock just that one individual list price placeholder. Right. Huh, okay. 
Fine, lots of options. And so now if you change the price to 4.55. Yeah. And then you try to update it on the panel, it won't change because uh -huh, it's locked. Uh, right. Now, how do you get it unlocked? This is why I would never do this. You have to select that placeholder in the document. Yeah. You have to go to the panel. You have to uncheck the lock option and then click replace. And now you can't update it. Uh -huh. So now I want you to imagine you went through your document and you manually locked 100 placeholders. Mm -hmm. yeah, you but now you need to update them. What are you going to have to do? You're going to have to hunt and peck to find those 100 placeholders yeah. to individually unlock each one right. before you can update them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, got it. So think about the maintenance. Yeah. So we have this feature for people who absolutely need to do it, mm -hmm. but it's not something I would recommend doing no. unless you absolutely have to. Yeah. Okay. So my purpose in training is just to teach you. You probably never want to have that lock checkbox checked on the panel. There, yeah. Okay. But that feature is there should you ever happen to need it. Sure. Okay. And then you're not going to be putting any notes on a placeholder. You can add your own special notes, as you can see in that little note box. Yeah. So click on 4655 again Okay. in the document. and. Um, now, if you look in the panel, you can put a note. So in that notes box, you can type, you know, this price needs checking. Okay. Yeah. So type that in, this price needs checking. And now click replace. And that assigns that note to that placeholder. If you click on another placeholder in the document, you won't oh. see the note. Oh, neat. Yeah, okay. So it's like a hidden note. The only place you can see this note is if you highlight that placeholder in the document and come look at the panel. Right, there's none anywhere else. It's, there. it's like a, yeah, it's hidden. Yeah. Because the note's assigned to the placeholder. So the only way you can see it is if you select that placeholder in the document. You can include a note in your report. Do you remember that? Oh, right. When you make a report, it includes it, yeah. Yeah, so one of the columns of information you can have in the report was notes. Ah, uh, yeah, right. So you'd see it in there, too. So you would see this note in the report. Uh-huh. Or you can see this note on the panel when you have that placeholder selected in the document. Those are the only two ways you can see the note. Okay. So it's good to make that report just to, as a second check or like for things like uh, that. But, again, it's just like locking an individual placeholder. How do you change or remove a note that you've placed on a placeholder? Yeah. Hard to find. The only way you can change it or remove it is to go select that placeholder in the document, yeah, which you have now, yeah, yeah. come to the panel, delete that note from the note box. Yeah, yeah, so I do that. And, and I'll click replace. That's the only way you can modify or get rid of it. Yeah. It's awkward. a one by one maintenance feature. Awkward, yeah. Okay. So again, I personally would not use notes unless I it met some very specific need. Got it, okay. Because it's high maintenance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's manual. Yeah, manual, one by one placeholder. But we have people that this is a feature they really need, so it's there. But they understand, you know, what the maintenance means. Mm. It's more work. So when you say placeholder, that, that, does that mean this selecting that? Okay. That's a placeholder? Every time you tag content, yeah. like that's a placeholder. Oh, okay. It's holding the place for data from the data. Place. I see. Right, right. Just trying to get the. So we the, call it a placeholder. Yeah. It's content. It's a. It's holding the place for data from the data file. So each one of these is a placeholder. You have text placeholders and you have picture placeholders. Right. I keep calling it tag, but I should be calling it placeholder. Yeah, we, we've been um, also referring to these as tags. Oh, okay. So a tag is a placeholder, a placeholder is a tag. 
Cool. All right. So we have one more thing we need to discuss, and that's batch processing. Yeah. And um, that's something that you're going to need to know how to do because it's going to save you a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so to do batch processing, we need to close the document because you can't do a batch process if a document's open. So you need, don't quit in design, just close the document. Don't save. And you can save the changes we made to it. Okay. Click save. Uh, you can oh. save it with the same name. I lost some path. Okay, now let's go to that folder where we see that document. In fact, I see it right there. Yeah. Not the report document. Yeah. Press Command D to make a copy of it. And another one. We'll do three for an example. Um, it could oh, be any number, oh, but that's an example. Three them. Yeah. Okay, so now you have three versions of that document, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's say you're working on a catalog, and instead of having all of the pages for the catalog in a single InDesign document, they decide to give you a document per section. Yeah. So I have my, you know, my desk, office desk section, I have my office chair section, etc. Right. So I have more than one document. Mm -hmm. And I want to do an update on all those documents. Yeah. I can either open one of the documents. Yeah. And either run update document or an update report. Right. Close it. Now open the second document. Yeah. Do an update document or an update report. Close it. Open the third document. And I, and I keep doing it document by document. Right. Okay. But we also have a feature called batch processing where we can do a whole bunch of them in a row for you. Oh, right. Okay. So you don't have to open each and do each document one by one. Right. Got it. And we call that batch processing because we're going to process a batch of documents. Mm -hmm. Here's how you use that feature. You go back to InDesign. Yeah. And you have to have all documents closed, which you do. Yeah. When you have all documents closed, if you go to the Design Merge, Merge dialog box, Oh, okay. We'll leave the pages set to all. Yeah. In the action menu, you can now open the action oh, menu. Yeah. Yeah. You can now say you want to do a batch process. That action's not available unless all documents are closed. Oh, okay. Right. But when all documents are closed, you can choose the action called batch processing. Now click start. Okay, on the right, you have some buttons. Select jobs. You tell it which documents you want us to process. You can add one or more documents, or you can have a scan a folder for them for you. Okay, nice. So I can select these then? Yeah, you can multiple select, and then okay. click open. Right. And you can also scan a folder. Clear the list. There's a button that says clear. You want to clear the list first. Right. Now, on, there's a... And now I'll select that folder yeah. and click choose. Oh, now it's got the uh, other one as well, the uh, original. It's there. got the original one, so you can highlight it and say remove, so it's not in the list. Right, okay. You can also rearrange them. So if you want us to do Miles New first, select it, oh. and then there's a up and down buttons to rearrange them. Oh, neat. Now, what, what would that do? Just do it in that order? Like You're making a list of the documents that you want us to batch process. Oh, okay. And the order that they are in the list is the order in which they will be processed. Oh, okay. And that does that matter or just more visual? Uh, it's up to you if that matters or not. Okay. Now, I mean, that's the order they will be in the report. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, just for organizational purposes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now let's say, okay. Yeah. Now we've selected the jobs. Now, on the left side of the dialog are your options for the batch. We yeah. want the batch to generate a report. Yeah. You don't have to do that. You could have us do an update without a report. Right. 
If you wanted us to do an update without a report, you would uncheck generate report. Sure. But me, when I'm doing an update, I want a report. Yeah. So I would always leave that checked. For sure. But you don't have to. You can delete it. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is the report settings? Click the setup button to see the report settings. Yeah. And they're the same settings from before. It's going to be sorted by the key, and it's including all your information. Right. This dialog, remember, is whatever your last settings were. Got it. Okay. And now we'll click OK. Next, DDF. Which DDF should we use when we do this batch process? Never use the DDF name document. You need to open that menu and you need to choose the correct DDF. Oh. In our case, we're using Miles US. Right. So that's an important setting Got to it. tell us which DDF to use yeah. because the DDF determines how we do the update. Of course, yeah, that's critical. Okay, now your options. Do you want just a report on these, or do you want us to update and then give you a report? Yeah. We're going to do an update. When we do the update, when we update the documents, do you want us to save all changes to the documents? In other words, save the updates that we did to the documents. Yeah. If you uncheck it, yeah. it, would, it would not save the change to the document. So it would be kind of like running a pre-flight on your update. <laughs> Yeah. You get a report of this is what would have happened if, if I had did. saved uh, the changes. Right. But I didn't save the changes, so the documents still have the old stuff in them. Yeah, yeah. Huh. But um, if you don't want, if uh, a pre flight might not be necessary, most people, of course, when they do the update, they want to save the change to the document. So let's put that back. So of course. Changes. Yeah, yeah, so right. So we'll update the document. Save the document with those updated prices and put that information in the report for you. Now, when it does save the document with the changes, if you remove that information in the add.ext box, if you make that an empty box, do you yeah. see where it says add extension? Yeah. If you remove that information that's in there, right. when we save the document with the changed prices, yeah. we will replace the original document. Sure. But if you add an extension like add dot e one, yeah, or, or new, one, something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Or just number one, or but, u for update one, or r for revision one. Now, when we save it, will the updated document will save it with a new file name, so you have the original document plus you'll have this new one. Okay, got it. That's good. Okay, hide document windows. Most people, when they do a batch process, they like to watch the documents open and close, open and close while they're being processed. Uh -huh. But just okay. a heads up, if you're doing a lot of them, if you hide the document window, we can process faster. Even though the document window is closed, you don't see the documents while they're being processed, yeah. you still cannot use InDesign for anything else until we're done. Okay. So whenever you're using our software in InDesign, you can't do anything else in InDesign until we're done doing whatever we're doing. Yeah, got it, okay. Um, so during training, we always show the document windows, but just uh, notice what does this do? If you checked it, we would not have to display the document while we're processing it so we can process faster. Sure, okay. And then display errors. If we run into an error, do you want us to interrupt the batch to show you the error? Normally people do want us to do that. For sure, yeah. The only time people would uncheck this is if they're running it overnight and they're not in the office. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, no, don't, don't interrupt. Just finish the job. And when I look in the morning, I'll look at the report and that'll tell me if there were any errors. Right. It can um, take that long. And I would say, okay. And it's going to ask you where to save the report and to give it a name. So change the name to like batch update or something like that. And then click save. Okay. And now we're going to walk through oh. each document that was in your list in the order that you have it listed. We open it, we update it, we put the information in the report, and then we move to the next document. All right. So now that when we're all done, you won't see any more progress windows. You know we're done. Yeah. And you can go look at the report. Oh, why not do that? 
Yeah. And then it's a report of all the documents. Yeah. So this would actually be the feature I could use if these files that I'm getting were set up properly. That I get the new data file from, from the client, you know, from somewhere. And they say apply to this job and then boom, it just instantly done. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah, it's nice because you don't manually have to say open document, update document, close document. Okay, open the next document, update that document, right. close that document, okay, go to the next one. It says you had to do them one by one, document by document yourself. Right, and, and that would also make it easier or make make it make more sense that I could split this 400 pages into eight fifty pages and just do them just as quick. Like there's no real... Uh, advantage to having a giant document to update that's correct mm -hmm. as long as everything's actually it might yeah. be faster because you know the process of 50 page documents a lot faster than the process of 400 page documents i see uh, yeah right the larger the document the slower the process <laughs> oh for sure yeah i could see that but uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying there's no no real advantage to having one giant document uh, for updating purposes not for updating purposes, yeah, but right. we don't know why they're wanting it all in one document. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is it, good to know. They may have some other reason that yeah. has nothing to do with updating. Yeah, I just the back of my mind, I'm uh, trying to figure but this yeah, out. But yeah, for you, no, they can be in separate documents and you can still update them all. Yeah, yeah. And additionally, if you open that report back up, yeah. <clears throat> so, one more thing to show you here. In this report, notice the content was separated by document name. So here's all the stuff that was in the first document. Now here's all the stuff that was in the second document. Right here. What if you need a report where it's not separated by document name? You want everything all just in a single list. Oh, yeah. We can do that too. Oh, okay. So I can show you how to do that next. So let's go back to InDesign. Yeah. And now I'll go back to Design Merge Merge. And we're going to do all pages, batch process again, yeah. click start. But this time, check consolidate items. Oh, okay. Right there. So it's and like, now uh, um, the jobs are still selected. Oh, they are. Okay. Jobs in list three. And remember whatever settings you last had. I see. Right. Now let's um, notice your file name extension. Make it two. R2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and okay. then batch update two. And then save. And you can see the difference in the report if you consolidate. And I'm just about done, I think. Yep. Uh, batch update. That's the old. Two. That's the that old. That's the right? test. Yeah. Uh, oh, this one here, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all just in one. I see. Um, I, um, you're not looking at the right document. You should have the word batch in front of it. Oh. So, um... That was the old one. Do we have... Should be... Um, sort by modification date. New report? Was that it? No. I don't know. What did you just name it? I wasn't paying attention yeah. <laughs> to what name you gave it. I don't know. I don't remember either. Uh, I well, thought let's it... just rerun it. Sorry? Report. Let's just rerun it. Yeah, let's try it again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good practice. All right. So design, so, merge, merge, merge um, batch, start. Start. So, oh, R3. Okay. No, you can leave it as two. Okay. You know, because there's going to be the same guy. Okay. 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 And now, uh, um, go to oh. the, oh, it's going to be a documents folder. That's why Yeah, I'm that's a it. different spot. So, so now click cancel, and we'll just go find a new documents folder. Yeah. Okay. How is this? Oh, wait, I'm at documents. There it is. Oh, okay. And oh. since document name is a piece of information in each row, you still know which document each one came from. Right. But you get it all in a single list. 
and still and that whole list is sorted by key. Oh yeah, right. There's three of these, three of those, three of those. Is that the way it works? Yeah, the reason we're kind of seeing duplicates is because they're in more than one document because we just made a copy of the original document. Right. Yeah. 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 It's still the same concept, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. So you can do your updates in all kinds of different ways, including a batch process. Sure. And also now, if you go back to the full, let's move that. Find that file we made. Where'd you put it? Did you move it yet? Uh, the, the second one? The batch report we were just looking oh, at. Oh, yeah. Where did it go? I deleted it, but yeah. here it is, yeah. Put it in your... Oh, put, it, it, to, put yeah, it over here. Where it should have been. Yeah, the yellow page. There we go. Okay, now you can close that folder. Yeah. Okay, so now if you look at that folder, your catalog page folder, yeah. notice you have more than one version of these documents now, right? Yeah, right. So if you look at Miles New... Oh, here. Yeah, I got these. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So let's let's look at Miles New. That was the training one. It's called Miles New. Imdd. The, the original one. Oh, we ran a batch process. The updated one was named Miles New R1. Yeah. And when you ran your second batch process, it was named Miles New. R2. So you have the document before the batch process updated. Oh, right. Oh. You have the version after your first batch process, and you have the version after your second batch process. I see. So right, we, right, right. So if you tell us to add an extension to save the changes, but to add an extension, you're, you're keeping the original document, and you're saving a version of the document the batch process produced. I see. Right. And it's got that extension. Perfect. So, so if you I have open the that, original one, and then you have the one we updated. So this one will be all up to date then. Yeah. So okay. um, if you close this document yeah. and you go back to design, merge, merge. Oh, in design, yeah. yeah. Design, merge, merge. Yeah. Batch process, click start. If you did not add an extension, Right. Then when we save the changes, you would end up with just the original version of the document, but it would be updated. Updated, right. But normally you want to keep a backup, I guess. Eh? Oh, it's up to you. Yeah, yeah. I've trained, I've, I've helped customers where, no, I don't want to have a million versions of this document on my system. Just update it and save the changes to the document. Don't yeah, give me yeah, a new version yeah. of it. Okay. And I've had other people like, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, I want preference. to keep the original and then here's the updated one. Yeah, it's a preference. Sure. Yes, whatever works best for you with your job process. Got it. Okay, cool. You can do either with our software. Nice. That's Yeah, it's really flexible. Eh? They got everything in here. <clears throat> yeah. You must have a good feedback loop for uh, <clears throat> from your clients. Yeah, we've been on the market for quite some time with this product. It yeah. used to be called Auto Price. Oh. And we yeah. recently changed the name to Design Rich Catalog. But it's been on the market a long time. Oh, okay. So how long? <coughs> oh, jeez. I'd have to look at my website to know. Oh. <coughs> a very long time. Yeah. Okay. 90s or before. Oh, that long. <coughs> wow. Yeah. So we have lots of features in the software, as you can see. Now, the features I'm showing you are what we just call our Design Rich Catalog basic features. Yeah. Um, as I said, Inkscape, they're doing a custom approach. Yeah. And they're using much more advanced features. Right. Because we can, we have, we can customize the software by adding scripts. Sure. Yeah. Wow. So that we can automatically make documents for you. Huh. <coughs> okay. I think that's what Enscape is doing, is they're using our automatic page building capability to automatically create these. But I don't know, I might be mistaken. That's why I said I'm not that familiar with the Enscape job. Yeah. I just understand they said it was a really sophisticated setup. Huh. <coughs> yeah, it didn't look basic to me. Okay, so, um, but for your training, we just kind of went over the basics. Yeah. So I yeah. guess next next step now, um, you need to find out from them what exactly is that they want you to do with these. Yeah. So they want you to <coughs> tag 
content that's not yet tagged. Right. So I'm going to make a list they here. They want you to um, replace right. any tags that are already tagged. So, okay, questions. Enscape questions. I'm just going <coughs> to make a little list here. So, do you want me to tag... Uh, on tag. So the, do they want you to add or replace any tags or placeholders? A tag is a placeholder, a placeholder is a tag. Got it. So do they want you to add or replace any of these placeholders or tags? Got it. Maybe they want you to add some, maybe they want you to replace some. Right. And what else should I ask them? And then question number two, are they going to want you to do any updating? Where they send you a data file and you update it. Updating a uh, data file. Well, I would assume so because they want new prices. Isn't that the uh, kind of the main thing? I don't know what their main thing is. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah me neither. Okay. I'm just training you on how to use the software. I don't know what their specs were, job specs were. Right. So um, if they do want you to do any updating, you'll need to know, do they want a report when you do the update? Oh, do they need a report? Because remember, you can do an update without a report. Just right. by saying design, merge, merge, update, document. Okay. Or you can do it with a report by saying design, merge, merge, variable content report. Yes. So okay. when you do update the documents, do they, do they want you to generate a report on that update? Yeah. At okay. The same time? Right. And, and then four. This is question number four. Am I remembering right? Yeah. Next question. You were going to talk to them about the size of the document. Right, okay. Because you can do a batch. Size of document. Why is it so big? <laughs> and then, oh, number five. What about picture placeholders? Yes, five. Uh, picture. You know that their document has, it does not have picture links in it. They don't have catalog picture variable links in it. Sorry, what was that? They have picture picture links. You know there, the picture link. The picture InDesign has the picture in the document link to a file, but it's not a design rich catalog picture variable link. Okay. So so file has uh, picture links, but file has pictures, but they aren't catalog placeholders. Are not catalog placeholders. Are they going to want you to make them a placeholder? Are they going to want you to update them? Should I make them uh, right. placeholders? Should you tag them as a placeholder? So it's a picture placeholder? Right. Or, or just... are they going to want you to update them? And do they need updating? If you do make them a placeholder, will you be updating them also? Okay. Yeah, so you need to find out specifics of what is it they want you to do with these documents and the content. Okay, definitely pass that on. Yeah, I have no right. idea. Now, once you find that out, yeah, um, you can apply the information we provided in training in order to accomplish it. But if you're unsure how to do any of this stuff, if you're unsure how to apply what we trained you to what they want you to do, once you know what they want you to do, um, why don't you open a support ticket? Right. And so that whoever is available can help you. Um, it may be me, it may not be me. Because I might not be available for a week, but someone else might be. Right. So, so to open a support ticket, click cancel. Yeah. If you remember how to do this, go to design merge menu at the top. Yeah. And choose help. Right. Oh, I got I, I have it bookmarked uh, as well, right? Um, yeah. Uh, let me just check that. But it's faster to me to go through the menu. <laughs> right, but that, I, I'm, I think that didn't work when we tried it. Um, well, let's try it again. Design merge. Help. Help. This one, right? Yeah. That didn't work and I didn't know why. Yeah, it's still, still not jump, uh, jumping over to... Uh, that's so, so far, weird. Right. I don't know why that's not working. Yeah. And, um, when you uh, let me ask you this. You're using InDesign. Yeah. 
Um, how have you arrived at this computer to use in design? Are you d directly sitting in front of the computer where you're writing in design, or are you using a remote connection? I got I got local. Your local user. Yeah. Using a local copy of our software. Yeah. And when you go to browse the internet, yeah. same thing. You're uh, a local user on the internet. Yeah. Then that should be working. Um, so if you want, you could open a support ticket to report that when you choose this menu um, item, online support center, it's not opening a browser and taking you to that page. Got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. maybe it's your browser security permissions on your system. Maybe your system's locked down. So when an application wants to go to an internet page, your system won't let you do that. Yeah, something simple like that. Okay. So it could be just your system security settings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you might be more locked down. Like I'm not locked down at all. I can go wherever I want. <laughs> right. Right. But maybe that's it. I don't know. I'm not a print production. Yeah. You know, service. So I don't have to be locked down. Got but it. Maybe your your system's more locked down regarding where you can go. Sure. Maybe but, they have a security on your system so that if an application wants to go to the internet, your system won't let it. Right. So here's here's the page. So uh, okay. What, so just open a support ticket. Open support ticket here, and then I would say uh, top right catalog, catalog that one, and then yeah. put my info on. Just fill it out and put your question. Subject. Okay. Got it. So if you have any, if you re require any additional training. Yeah. Or if you have any questions, applying this training to the jobs they give you. Yeah. Or if you run into any problems while you're trying to apply this information yeah. to your jobs, you can just open a ticket. Yeah. And then that way, if I'm not available, no big deal. Somebody else at my company will pick it up and help you. Great. I really appreciate the support. Yeah. Now, when you open a ticket, yeah. our help desk system will automatically send you an email to let you know that your ticket has been submitted okay if you don't see an email telling you that your ticket was successfully submitted yeah look in your junk folders got it because some the message comes from no reply at meadows .task, meadows help desk well i forget something like that yeah um anyway so it comes from an email address that no reply at, I don't know, Meadows Help Desk or something like that. Yeah. That um, your, your mailing system might consider as junk. Sure. Got it. Okay. And then whenever a Meadows Technical Support Technician should post a reply on your ticket, yeah. our Help Desk system will automatically send you an email to alert you that we have posted a reply on your ticket. And that email will include a link to access your ticket. Oh, nice. Okay. So you can read the reply that we posted. Right. Okay. Um, so again, if you're not seeing that we've replied within 24 hours or so, definitely check your junk folder because we've replied. It's mm -hmm. really, we usually reply in two to four hours. Nice. So definitely, I would say in 24 hours. We're under contract reply, I think it is within 48. Perfect. Now, if you go back to um, the page you were at before in your browser, um, go back to your bookmark. This one? Notice you can check the ticket status yourself. Okay. To check the status of an existing ticket, you need to know what tracking ID it was given. Right, that'll be in the when email. When okay. you open a new ticket, the system automatically assigns a tracking ID to it. Hmm. Okay. So copy or write down what that tracking ID was. Yeah. So if your email system's having trouble getting our help desk emails, you can come here, you can enter the tracking ID, you can enter your email address, and that way you can view your ticket. Got it. Perfect. That's Pretty yeah, slick. so the tracking ID kind of works as a user ID, and the email is kind of working like a password. I so see. no one else can see your ticket. Unless they know the ID and the email that's registered to that ticket, they can't see it. Okay. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's it, kind of like a username password concept here. Yeah. Tracking ID and email that's is good. our security for you so that nobody else can see the ticket but you. Right, right. it's a two part. And if we got yeah. tracking ID, I get it. Yeah, that's typical. It tells you what to do. Yeah, it gives you help. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Well, Jenna, thank you so Yay. much. It's very nice. Um, yeah, so I hope that the training was very helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. And we'll leave you now to go get more information yeah, about yeah. exactly what it is they want you to do. And then if you have any questions about how to do what they want you to do, how to apply your training to what they want you to do, open a ticket. Yeah. And if you have any problems applying, you know, problems or using the software, open a ticket. Okay. So so will that cost be uh, otherwise? Will that will that be billed to us then for that extra ticket? Will that what? Well will that cost money like to get that extra help? No, you have support. Support comes with the product. I see. Okay, great. Thanks very you much. You purchase the product, you get support. I see. So product price includes support. Right. That's good to know. And yeah. then Whenever your license expires, yeah, you'll be asked to renew your support. Okay, right. And I don't know. You have to look at the support agreement, but the um, support agreement includes, I think, um, free upgrades or updates. Mm. I can't recall. Okay. So, like, if now let's say you're using InDesign twenty twenty two twenty. Right. Two? Is that what you're using? No, no, not yet. Okay. Um, we have the software for 2022. Yeah, okay. That'll be coming. Yeah. Um, so you could, um, if you want to see what software we have available, go to metaspiss.com. Yeah. This one? Yeah, no, take the word husk out of there. Yeah. Dot com. Just go there. So, Metasps.com. Yeah. Go there. That's our main page. You can bookmark it if you want. Right, right. Okay. And then if you want to see um, applications, let's see. Um, nope, under products maybe. It's a new site, so I just have to poke around here. Catalog? Um, yeah, let's go to support instead. I just oh. want to go straight there. Um, at the top, you have support. Yeah. Um, downloads. Click that one. Yeah. You fill out this form, and we will email you a link to get to our downloads page. Okay. No, I I can just tell you what it is. So you don't have to do the form. Would you like me to do that? Sure. And then you can bookmark it. Yeah. So you don't have to fill out the form to get there. So I'm looking it up. One sec. I have it bookmarked myself. Oh, okay. So I can get to this page without having to go through the form. Okay, you want to go to HTTPS colon. Yeah. Meadowsps.com slash. Yeah. Direct, D-I-R-E-C-T dash or hyphen. Downloads with an S dash page. Direct, sorry, and that last bit after the dot com. Direct dash yeah. downloads dash page dash page oh, wait, I it yeah. there we go there. yeah here we go yeah and bookmark that so yeah. this way you don't have to fill out the form to get here all right and we have design Ridge pro which is our variable data software all right and we have design Ridge catalog which oh. is what you're using our catalog software okay so you want to look at catalog, not yeah. pro. Right. And then right. in catalog, notice it says it's for InDesign 2022. Yeah. And if you look down below, the version that's available is 17.75 build 02, yeah. which we released on November 9th. Okay. Now, if you want to see if there's a newer version for 2021, which is what you're using in Design 2021. Yeah. Notice that under the download Mac and Windows, there's some blue text. Yeah, older um, versions. Older versions. If you click that, this is the page where you can go to oh, get yeah. older versions. Right. 
Uh, so this and again, one. Yeah, I just want to look at the catalog side, not the pro side. Right, and here, and it says uh, release September second, twenty twenty one. So it's probably what I have. And, the, and it requires InDesign version sixteen point four. That's right. Yes. It won't work in earlier versions of InDesign version sixteen. So there's version sixteen point zero, version sixteen point one, version sixteen point two, version sixteen point three. When InDesign went to version 16.4, they made a change that required us to make a new version of our software. Uh -huh. And so we did, and that new version of our software will not work in version 16.3 or below. It has to be 16.4 or above. I see. That's the red warning there. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So you have to update InDesign to 16.4 before you can use this version of our software. It's still InDesign 2021. It's just what yeah. version of 2021. Yes. Yeah, an update. Okay. So you'd have to look at, we can do that. If you go back to InDesign, so this was 16.7, right? Right. 16.7 for build 08. And now go to help about InDesign. Whoops, you're on a Mac. So in design menu about in design. Right in here, yeah. 16. Okay, your version 16.3.2. Yeah, so I should update that 16.4. You should update in design to 16.4. Got it. Okay. And then oh, wait a minute. And our in design and then our let me see what version of design merge you have installed. So go to design merge. Yeah. Help about design merge. And you're running 16.7.4. Four dot eight. So you do have sixteen dot seven four build eight, but you're not running the uh, correct version of InDesign with it. Right. I need to update that. Okay. So you should update your InDesign twenty twenty one. Yes. To sixteen dot four to make sure you don't run into any problems. Got it. Or go to twenty twenty two. I see. Um, if you go to twenty twenty two. Yeah, your license, I think, should work for 2022. Do you want me to check that while we're still connected? Sure. Or you can, you know, open a support ticket if you want to do that later. It's your choice. Um, yeah, maybe I'll leave it for later. i got enough going on here. Yeah, so you can just open a support ticket and say, does my license support upgrading to 2022? I see. Okay. All right. And they will tell you if it does. Now... You, if you have a license that supports 2021 and you want to upgrade to 2022, yeah. as long as you're installing the 2022 version on the same system where you're running 2021, yeah. which you would be, right. you don't have to uninstall 2021. Oh. I, for example, have this, uh, our software running in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022 all in the same system. Right, yeah. All with the same order code. Okay. My order code. Right. So you don't have to deactivate it in an old version or uninstall it in an old version to install it and activate it in a new version as long as they're all on the same computer. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. Oh, it says the... Uh... So just so you know, you don't have to take it out of 21 to put it in 22. Yeah, yeah. 2022. Okay. Now, when you go to install InDesign 2022, yeah. InDesign by default removes previous versions of InDesign. That's right. You have to you have to uh, check the option to keep the old versions. Exactly, which yeah. I do. I always keep old versions, so I can always go back and use an old version of my software if I need to. Yes. Yeah, that's good to know. It, yeah. sa it says so the year. So you know, when you do an upgrade to a new version of InDesign, you don't have to get rid of the old version of InDesign and you don't have to deactivate or uninstall your old version of our software in that older version of InDesign. Oh, nice, okay. As long as your order code supports this. Right, okay. So we can set up an order so it can run only in 2021 and nothing else, or we can set up an order code so it works in all versions of InDesign it just depends on how much money you pay for your order. <laughs> oh, nice, okay. So just open a support ticket and say, hey, I've got it in 2021. Can I install and activate it in 2022? And right. I'll tell you. Sure, perfect, good to know. Yeah, so that'll have you all set for updating and upgrading. Yeah, nice, okay. 
Okay. Okay, well, update and design. Now, when you go to update 2020 and design 2021, yeah. when you go to update it from version 16.3 to 16.4, yeah. it will not disturb our software. Okay, yeah, that's a minor up update. Yeah, okay. So you will not have to reinstall our software after you update and design from 16.3 to 16.4. Okay. It gives me the year since you guys have been around 1991 here. There you go. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of when InDesign came out. Oh, yeah, we were, uh, um, actually our software was originally only for Cork Express. Oh, right. There so, was no InDesign in 1991. Yeah, that's true, eh? It didn't come out till later. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so we were originally only for Cork Express because there was no InDesign. Yeah, because uh, Adobe bought that from um, Word Perfect or Microsoft or something. Frame Maker. Frame Maker, was it? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. And then um, as time progressed, we had our software for Quark Express. We made a version of it for InDesign when InDesign came out. I see. And then as time has progressed, nobody's using Quark Express anymore, so we dropped it. So we no longer have our software for Quark Express. We only have it for InDesign now. I see. Yeah, the dominant software for sure. Yeah, because nobody's using it in Quark anymore, so. Yeah, yeah. We dropped it. Good. Okay. Yeah. So Thanks. our history, and you can find more about our company history on our Meadows website. Perfect. Cool. That's good to know. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so I need to run. We think we're past our time. So again, if you have any questions, just open the tech. Will do, Jen. Thanks so much. That's great. I really You're got welcome. I'm armed I with the knowledge. Success with this. Thank you. Now, armed with the knowledge you've given me, I can uh, progress for sure. Thank you so much. Perfect. Okay. okay. You're welcome. Have a good day. Okay, take care. You too. Bye Thank for you now. Too. Bye. So...